Well, welcome back. If you've been traveling this summer or taking some time off, perhaps visiting family or friends or just resting up, I took a week off in August which involved air travel. And hearing of all the problems with flying these days, I braced myself for the worst. But I was lucky. Other than a two-hour weather delay on my return trip, my trip went fine. One good thing about modern travel is that it's nearly impossible to get lost. And that's because of a technology called GPS, which stands for Global Positioning System. Using satellites in space, your car or your device knows exactly where you are to within just a few feet. And it's almost never wrong. If you obey that computer-generated voice, you're likely to get where you want to go. But switch off your GPS, try to make your way on your own, and there's a good chance you're going to get lost. Well, today we're beginning a brand new message series titled Lost and Found. With the busyness and pace of life ramping up right now, I know lots of people are struggling to find their way trying to find that right balance between work and school, family and faith. Maybe that's how you're feeling right about now. Feeling a little lost or maybe just a little bit off of your game. Life has a way of doing that, especially in busy seasons. Well, the scripture readings for this series help us rediscover what matters most in life and can help us find our way to the life that God wants for us. So let's begin our journey. In today's first reading from the book of Exodus, we catch up with the Israelites in the midway point of their journey to the promised land. Now, to pinpoint exactly where they are, remember that they were slaves in Egypt when God sent Moses to free them from bondage. They escaped through the Red Sea, which God parted for them, and now they're wandering in the wilderness. And for that entire time, God was with them, leading and guiding and molding them into his chosen people. So it's like they had their own form of GPS, a God positioning system. But today, we heard that they switched it off, decided to go their own way, and immediately got lost. While Moses was up on the mountain talking with God, the Israelites fashioned an idol, a golden calf, and began to worship it. Now, I don't know about you, but this strikes me as unimaginable after all God had done for them. Almost like an unforgivable sin it made God so angry that he wanted to wipe them out. But Moses interceded on their behalf, reminding God that he had chosen them and loved them. So God relented of the punishment he threatened to carry out. In our gospel today, Jesus told a parable about a prodigal son who decided one day to leave home and strike out on his own. He left behind a father who loved him and all the things he'd been taught about how to live. You could say that he too turned off his GPS and he immediately got lost. To those who heard Jesus tell this story, the behavior of the prodigal son would have sounded so extreme that they would have considered it almost unforgivable. And it was only when he hit rock bottom, got as low as a person could get, that he decided to change course. The prodigal son set out for home, and upon arriving, encountered a welcome that sounds too good to be true. His father ran to him, showered him with love, he had no interest in punishing his son, only in redeeming and forgiving him. 
The wrinkle in this story is the reaction of the older brother, the hard-working, faithful son. He always did what he was told, obeyed all the rules, never strayed or abused his father's goodwill, and never brought shame on his family. When he heard that his dad forgave his younger brother without any consequences, he became so angry that it caused a rift between him and his father, and he refused to join in the celebration, which is how the story ends. What is Jesus' point with this parable? He wants us to put ourselves into this family drama, to see ourselves in the characters. How do we do that? Well, it starts with a question, but I'll warn you, it's not an easy one to answer. When you heard Jesus' parable, which of the two sons did you most relate to? Are you the prodigal son or the older brother? Now, most churchgoers I've talked with more readily identify with the older brother. Maybe you do too, and that's understandable. After all, you're here now. You're attending Mass and saying your prayers and trying to live the best life you can. These are good things. These are great things. I wished everyone did as you're doing. The challenge is to do these good things without taking on the bad attitudes of the older brother, being judgmental, angry, and unforgiving towards the prodigals in your life, towards those who are lost and need to be found. And we all have prodigals in our lives. I do, and so do you. It's a real challenge to not become that older brother, constantly comparing ourselves to others, but we all do it. We justify our own sins, decide that they're no big deal, which also leads to thinking that God's mercy is no big deal. Or, like the older brother, we think that all our good deeds have earned God's love. Here's Jesus' message today. Until you see yourself as the prodigal son, you will never truly understand just how much God loves you. I really need you to hear this, so I'm going to repeat it. Until you see yourself as the prodigal son, you will never truly understand just how much God loves you. The only reason we are here now is because of God's mercy. We are all sinners in need of God's love, God's unconditional, undeserved, and unearned love. We need to see ourselves as the prodigal son. We're the ones who were lost. God found us, found us, ran to us, embraced us with his love. God loves and forgives us just as he loved and forgave the Israelites and with that same undeserved love, the father poured out on his prodigal son. It's what we mean by unconditional love. It's the love that God has for all of us. And I really mean all of us, those here and those not here. So how do we get in touch with our inner prodigal son? It starts by admitting that at times, we all switch off our spiritual GPS, try to go our own way. We turn to other things, sometimes without noticing, making them the most important thing, such as work or school, our relationships or pleasure, our homes and possessions. And these aren't bad things. These are good things, necessary things but not things which can satisfy the deepest longings and desires we all have. Not things that matter most in life. And any time we try to fill our lives with things that can't satisfy, 
the more we do it, the more we become like the prodigal son, moving further and further away from God's love and his plans for us and ending up lost. To get in touch with our inner prodigal, we also need to tune out that voice of the older brother, the one who stood in judgment of his younger brother, that inner voice that sounds like this. I've never turned my back on God. I've never hit rock bottom. I'm not the prodigal. I'm the older son, the one who stayed, the loyal, faithful, hardworking one. We need to tune out that voice if we're going to get in touch with our inner prodigal, if we want to truly experience the profound, unexpected, and undeserved gift of God's love. No matter what you do or how many times you do it, God will never stop loving you. Never, ever. And today, Jesus reminds us that God celebrates with incredible joy any time you return to him with your whole heart, any time you are lost and are found again. And we should celebrate when we do find our way back. To conclude this message, I want to lead you through a guided meditation to help you get in touch with your inner prodigal son and hopefully rediscover the depth of God's great love for you. If you feel so inclined, I invite you to close your eyes now. Imagine the moment when God looked at the world and realized that it needed a person just like you. God chose your parents and sent you into the world to be a blessing to others. God made you for a specific purpose in life. The Lord knows you inside and out, knows when you sit and stand, understands your thoughts from afar. Even before a word is on your tongue, God knows it. At every single moment of your life, God encircles you with his love. Maybe your childhood was a blessing filled with grace and love, but more likely you encountered difficulties. Maybe you were teased, maybe you were sick, maybe you were poor and hungry. Maybe you experienced some family drama growing up. Maybe you struggled in school. Maybe you experienced abuse or trauma. And maybe these difficulties made you think that God didn't care about you quite as much as everyone else. But no matter what happened, God loved you. As you got older, maybe you grew strong-willed or rebellious. Maybe you sought after honor or pleasure or wealth a little too much. Maybe you didn't want to rely on anyone and you became self-sufficient. Maybe you found ways to always be in control, to be important. Maybe you got so busy that you failed to notice the people around you who were hurting. Maybe somewhere along the way, you shut God out. God still loved you. Maybe you followed all the rules and fell into the sin of pride. Maybe you grew judgmental about other people, about how they did things. Maybe you came to think of your sins as no big deal. It's just a little gossip. It's not hurting anyone. Everybody does it. Maybe you thought that you didn't really need forgiveness. And in your own way, you shut God out. No matter what you did, God still loved you. Whether you're feeling lost, forgotten, 
shameful or proud today. God wants you to see him running to meet you, throwing his arms around you, embracing you, forgiving you, and saying to you, I will always love you. Mercy flows from God's heart to us, redeeming and welcoming us. Just bask in God's unending love, flooding down on you and making you whole. You were lost and now are found. Amen. <laughs>